Traditionally, water quality monitoring programs have relied upon chemical and physical measurements to assess water quality in aquatic ecosystem conditions. Aquatic biomonitoring, on the other hand, directly measures changes in biotic communities such as fish, benthic macroinvertebrates, and algae in order to directly assess the health of aquatic ecosystems. The Canadian Aquatic Biomonitoring Network, or CABIN, is the National Biomonitoring Program coordinated by Environment Canada, which provides a standardized sampling protocol for assessing freshwater aquatic ecosystem conditions using benthic macroinvertebrates. CABIN is a collaborative program that uses a network of networks approach for collecting, assessing, and distributing biological information. This approach promotes interagency collaboration and data sharing to achieve consistent, comparable, and scientifically credible reporting on freshwater quality and aquatic ecosystem conditions in Canada. Since 2008, the Water Resources Management Division annually conducts sampling of benthic macroinvertebrates at stream sites across the province in accordance with the sampling and processing protocols established by the CABIN program. These invertebrates are collected and identified to provide valuable biological water quality information on streams across Newfoundland and Labrador. This biological data is complementary to the physical and chemical data collected throughout the year at many of the sampling locations. Sampling is conducted during late summer and early fall months, typically late August to late October, depending on weather and flow conditions. A team of two to three cabin train samplers is required as per sampling protocol. Streams are sampled while at their lowest flow, when possible, so that the sampled area is the portion of the stream which is always underwater and is thus the primary habitat of the invertebrates living on the stream bed. Sampling is conducted in stream sections which contain at least a portion of the riffle environment. This ensures that sampled habitats are as consistent as possible at each location and that the community assemblages are comparable. A cabin sample consists of several components or steps, including the safety check, site description, and reach characteristics, the chemical and physical parameters water data sample, the benthic macroinvertebrate sample, stream measurements, including a cross-section and flow, and measurements of the river's substrate. First, let's look at the safety check, site description, and reach characteristics. Upon arriving at a sampling site, stop. Do not go in the water until you are ready to take a sample, as disturbance may interfere with the bugs or the water quality sample. The site is inspected for any safety issues or concerns, and decisions are made amongst the group on where sampling will be completed and in what order. Information on the sampling location is recorded, including site descriptive data such as latitude, longitude, elevation, how to access the site, local landmarks, reach characteristics, and land use activities in the area. Photos are taken of all parts of the stream, including the substrate. All information is recorded on the field sheets. Next, let's look at taking the chemical and physical water data sample. When chemical and physical water quality data are collected before the bug sample, it is collected downstream of the intended kick area to avoid disturbance to the upstream invertebrates. If water quality samples are taken after the invertebrate sampling, they are taken upstream of all activity in the river to prevent contamination due to substrate disturbance. Chemical data grab samples are taken in bottles provided by the analyzing lab and must be clearly marked with sample site information and kept cool until they are shipped to the laboratory.
physical parameters such as temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, turbidity, and specific conductance are measured using a multi-sensor probe. All information is recorded on the field sheets. Next, let's look at collecting the benthic macroinvertebrate sample. One team member accesses the timer, counting down three minutes for the kick net sampler and watching the kicker for safety issues, warning them of any obstacles in their path in the river. The kicker walks through the riffle area of the river in a zigzag pattern against the flow, from downstream to upstream, keeping the net downstream of their feet as they twist and kick the substrate. This releases invertebrates from the riverbed, allowing the flow to carry them into the net. At the end of the three minute kick, the flow of the water is used to direct the bugs and debris toward the bottom of the kick net. Next, the contents of the kick net and collection cup at the bottom of the net are transferred to the bucket. The kick net is thoroughly washed and inspected to ensure that all contents have been transferred to the bucket. Large unwanted debris, such as rocks and fresh twigs and leaves, are carefully washed with water and scraped if necessary to remove any attached bugs. Care is taken to not squash the bugs during the transfer process. The unwanted debris is then discarded. The sample in the bucket is decanted into the sieve to separate out unwanted debris and organisms. To have a closer look at the bugs collected, the sample is transferred to a plastic tray. Closer inspection reveals the various bugs that are living in the river. Yeah, I'm zooming right in on uh, it now. Okay. There we go. Finally, the sample is transferred into a labeled wide mouth plastic jar, using the sieve to drain most of the water from the sample. Samples are preserved with 10% buffered formalin in a 1 to 3 ratio to ensure adequate tissue preservation of the bugs. Next, we'll take a look at stream measurements. Information on rivers channel and flow and slope are also measured. The distance across the river from bank to bank is measured. This is known as the wetted width. An estimate of the distance between banks during flooded peak flows is also taken. This is known as the bankful width. The 
velocity and depth measurements are taken at regular intervals across the river. Slope measurements are meant to reflect a rough estimate of the gradient of the surface of the river. This is calculated using a hand level, measuring tape and survey pole, or can be roughly estimated from a map. When conditions in the river necessitate it, such as obstacles or high flow, slope measurements can be adapted for safety reasons, as long as an estimate of the general vertical change, or the rise, and horizontal change, or the run, are calculated. Next, we'll take a look at substrate measurements. Throughout the sample area, 100 measurements are taken at random of the substrate on the stream bed. This provides information on the composition of the substrate where the collected bugs were living. The intermediate axis of rocks are measured and recorded, including 10 estimates of embeddedness or how buried the rock is by other rocks or sediment. When all sample components are done, the field sheets are reviewed to ensure all measurements have been recorded. The area is scanned thoroughly to ensure that no equipment or debris are left at the site. Bugs and chemical water quality samples are kept cool until they can be shipped to the respective labs for analysis. All information recorded on the field sheets, as well as photos and lab results, are entered into the cabin database online. For more information, please feel free to contact water at gov.nl.ca. Rennie's River, in all its glory.